Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to be talking about how to properly clean your guitar. So what we're going to be doing today is taking this 1976 Gibson Les Paul apart minimally but taking the strings and stuff off and the bridge and tailpiece, tuners, just little odds and ends, pick guard, that kind of stuff so we can properly clean the guitar. So before we get started, we're going to go ahead and take uh, an overall general look of the uh, condition of it and fingerprints and smudges, dirt, stuff like that. So now I have two cameras going here, so I'm going to go ahead and get these to go in different angles so you guys can see. Fingerprints. Smudges. Dust. Take a good look at the fretboard. Headstock. So you can tell it's been a while since it's been clean. The man that I got it off of, uh, Mr. Blues Man Guitar Guy, he uh, he loved this guitar and said he played it a lot and it was one of his favorites. He actually says that the uh, 57 Gold Top that I traded him <clears throat> could be the new 76. He loved it so much. That makes me really happy because I liked that guitar a lot and it took this in order for me to let go of it. So anyways, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start the cleaning process on this. So obviously we want to detune the strings, so I'm going to cut them. So they're not just snapping off and getting in the eye or scratching the guitar. So I usually like to cut them about mid-neck because if they do pop back like that, they're not scratching something down here or up here at the headstock. Here, it's I'll just get them up here. So that's the way I like to cut the strings about midway up the neck, and that keeps it from getting anything or you. They're 45 years old. It looks pretty good. Looks like the uh, the inlays might have had to been glued back in at one time. That one's awful high. So is that one. Yeah, we're gonna have to have something done with that. Cause that inlay is sticking up way too high. So before we restring this, I will take it down to Lay's guitar. I'm going to pick up my ES and have them look at the, the fretboard on this and see what they'll charge me to get that straightened out. So this is one of the guitars that's not going to be for sale. This is going to be my guitar. If somebody offered me the right amount of money for it, I would let it go just to buy another 76, but I doubt that I'll do that. I do want to get a triple pickup 76. Uh, there's a gorgeous one on Reverb right now. Uh, triple pickup, original case. Just immaculate. The guy wants like $8,900 for it. And I get it. It's 
it's super clean it's a 76 you're not going to get another one that clean so i the beholder i would actually pay that money for it but uh i don't have <laughs> like almost nine grand to just throw at a guitar right at the moment and i need to get a 70, 77 next um I want to get a deluxe pro or just a standard with the P90s black. I was born in 77, so I got or 76, so I got this for me, and then my wife was born in 77, so I want to get one in her year as well. So I like to get as much stuff as I can off of the guitar so I can clean the lacquer properly without having to stop and leaving wax and dirt and stuff around parts and underneath the things. And I normally only do this, take it apart this extreme first time I get something uh, so I can clean it real good and then after that my stuff lives in the case with the exception of my strap in that acoustic the five guitars or four guitars you see hanging there in the background there's five there's one up there in the case those are going to be on an upcoming episode uh, those are my dad's vintage barn finds so uh little teaser there and he will he will be on the show obviously because uh, those five guitars are his and we're going to be putting those up for sale <clears throat> okay so now that I got the, the pick guard the bridge and the tailpiece off we can see the shadowing and where they were So once we get the uh, the lacquer polished on it, we'll see if it's actually uh, just a dust shadow or if it indeed has changed colors naturally just uh, from age. We can see our typical ding here from the nut on the, the pick guard. And they started putting little felt pieces. It took them how many decades to uh, figure that one out but uh, they finally started putting a piece of felt there I personally hate pick guards I think a guitar is ruined once you stick the screw holes in it and after that you just gotta have the pick guard on it because I can't stand to look at a screw hole that shouldn't be there to begin with um, I think the pick guards in the bracket should come with the guitar and then it should be up to the purchaser to decide whether they want to put the two holes in their guitar and put a cheap piece of plastic on it or not. I mean, some people like them, some people dig them. I don't. I think they look cheap. Um, I just, I don't like pick guards. But this one has been drilled out for a pick guard, so it's going to always have a pick guard. Because I'm not going to, uh, to leave it off and look at holes. And that's the way it was, so... Anyways, we're going to move on here to the headstock and I'm going to get these tuners off. I'm going to go over here and grab me a nut driver. So one of the things I definitely need to do is invest in some really good Lutheran tools. And I got quite a few little odds and ends over here for doing what I do, but 
eventually we're going to do a whole lot more with the cars, amplifiers, pedal loop, all that kind of stuff. The uh, some other family members coming in to uh, do soldering and troubleshooting, stuff like that. So one thing I definitely want to do, since this is all original, I want to make sure all these parts go back right where they came from. I know it might not matter, but it kind of does to me. So, I'm just going to take them off one at a time. And I will polish these individually too before I put them back on. Every single piece I polish. So it's going to be a long video. You guys can uh, fast forward through it here and there. I was going to do a time lapse, but I figured the uh, time lapses that I started doing, unless I take the time to sit and edit and talk over it and explain what I'm doing, time lapse sucks. So. Uh, maybe when I get better at editing and stuff, I can shut up and just time lapse this part forward and go, okay, I got them off. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing yet on uh, YouTube. I'm sure it's really easy and super simple. And people are kind of like, oh, you just need to edit your videos. Well, eventually I will. Uh, my wife has been eyeballing some editing software that she thinks is really good so uh, and she's really smart I'm going to leave it up to her so <clears throat> anyhow got uh, a good look at the truss rod this time it's just at the tip of the acorn nut so we're starting to get there but it's still good And again, you know, a lot of people are like, why is he taking all that off? Well, it's simple to clean it, to clean it properly because with all these tuners here in the way, when you're trying to polish, all you're doing is just, you can see over the years where people have wiped it. So between the serial numbers in here, it just scratches back and forth from people rubbing on it. Uh, when you get these out of the way, so you can properly polish that whole surface and, and get it nice and clean and smooth. And then you can polish all these tuners. When you put it all back on, then it's super clean and all polished and you don't have wax and dirt stuck in around the edges. And I personally just I like to do a good job on it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a, a good half-ass wipe down, especially if you've been playing it. But uh, after a certain amount of time, it needs a good clean. Imagine this is the first time these tuners have ever been off of this since they were put on in 1976. Because usually, by now, somebody has changed them to something else, and then you'll have these screw holes here, and that would have killed it for me. I would have never traded for this guitar, or and I would never buy one where they put other tuners on it and have extra holes. That's just it's like the pick card. Once they're there, you just gotta stick with that kind of, that style of tuner. Just buy another tuner. If you don't like this tuner, buy one or you can screw the damn thing in where it belongs. Don't put extra holes in it. I mean, it's just ridiculous. That drives me insane. So many beautiful guitars I've passed up on because of that. Because 
extra holes in the head stop. As a matter of fact, while we're talking about it, uh, Sam Ash in uh, Mayfield, they were talking about trading that gold top, that 57 gold top, for a 1969 uh, Black Beauty triple pickup. And <clears throat> they told me that they would do exactly like I did. They'd have it listed for 9000 and they would they would try to get eight out of my guitar. And I think they were asking 9000 for theirs. So I was all in. And then when I went and looked at it, they had put waffle backs on it, which, okay, yeah, cool. Waffle backs are cool. But it had this style of tuner on it. So now you have all these six holes here. So that was an eyesore. And then if you took the waffle backs off and put the original ones back on, now you've got two holes per tuner to look at instead of one. So that ruined it for me. And then, come to find out, the center pickup on it was not factory. Somebody had took a router and decided I'm going to make it a three pickup myself. So after hearing that, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Um, that just ruined it for me. The guitar itself, though, was in better condition than this one, by far. Um, but again, this kind of stuff, uh, buckle worming, scratches, stuff like that, that don't bother me. That just shows that this guitar was used and loved and it was played that doesn't bother me um and you got negligent gouges and chips and all kinds of different stuff like that and screw holes that that's when i start getting turned off with guitars this is perfectly fine it's 45 years old almost it should have a wear on it unless it's been a, a case clean its whole life um which i think that uh, that 76 with the three pickups on reverb pretty much lived in the case its whole life. Also on reverb, there's a 1972 double pickup um, custom that is just absolutely mint condition. I mean, the cleanest one I've probably ever seen, probably ever will see. Uh, so if you guys want to check that out. That's, that's a nice one, but he, he's also up there too. I think he's finally came down on his price though. I think last time I looked at it, don't, don't hold me to this, but I think he was around seven, seven or eight, which is, uh, which is really super good, especially for as clean as that is. Uh, the only reason I'm not going to buy it because it's a 72, um, maybe a 77. So, that's the only reason I'm not interested in that, because if I was to buy it, I'd be buying that to keep it, and it's a 71, and 72, whatever it was, 72, and I need 76, 77. So, this is what I got. I got one of the players wear, which, like I said, I'm, I'm fine with that. I just got like the uh, neglected thing. There's a difference between... Players wear and neglected, and I don't like neglected. Players wear is fine. Okay, so now we got the uh, cavity covers off. We can take a good look in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and look first. And other than the pickups being changed, it does appear these are all the original pots. The uh, little metal ashtray shield thingy is missing. I'm going to have to grab one of those off of uh, Reverb. That's unfortunate because those are expensive for a used one. A little metal cover that goes over the, the pots. Two screws hold it down. That, that's missing. So. I'm going to go ahead and grab me one of those. I like to uh, to keep things as original as possible. So the uh, original pickups were taken out of this, as you see in the other video. And we unboxed it. 
He did send them. Uh, the ones that are in here are the DiMarzio uh, Super Distortion. 109 bucks a piece for those pickups. But the factory ones are in here. So I'm going to do a little research on it. Uh, since these are already in here, I might fool around with it just as it is for a little while. Uh, research these pickups, see what they're supposed to be um, versus like a, a burst bucker or a pro bucker or whatever, you know, a 490R, 490T, 500R, whatever. See what they're, they're supposed to be compared to or, or like. Same with, with these because I really like uh, blues, stuff like that. Uh, so if these are like real heavy metal pickups, it's probably not going to be my thing. Uh, so if for some reason we decide we don't want to leave these in here, they will be up for sale. But the original pickups will always stay with us. And hopefully the pots too. Hopefully we don't ever have to change those. Definitely need to uh, get a little air in there and blow the dust out of it. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and, and start cleaning this. The first thing I like to start with is the fretboard. The reason I say that, most of them, and this one here is, is really smooth. It doesn't have any open grain or nothing on it, so it's not going to require the cleaning like the newer guitars that I've worked on. Um, normally what I do, and I'm going to do it now, I'm going to just start uh, cleaning the prep. So I, I always use all the Dunlop products. So this is the cleaner and prep, the O1 for the fretboard. And then here is the deep conditioner. So after I clean with the O1, I'll do the deep condition O2, and then when I'm completely done with the whole guitar and before I do my final wipe down, I'll take the fretboard Ultimate Lemon and I'll go ahead and put that on there and then wipe it off. So I do a three step on the fretboard. I'll make sure you guys are getting ready to watch. Again, that's, that's the final step. Um, for this guitar, we're going to use um, the same thing, that the Dunlop 65. This is this is polish and cleaner, so this will be my, my first step. And then the second step will be using the cream uh, wax on it. Newer guitars that are got a really nice shine that, that aren't loaded with scratches and, and stuff like that. I use the Platinum. So the 65 Platinum Deep Clean and then the 65 Platinum Spray Wax. These, use, these I use on the newer finishes. Um, I don't use them on old ones because uh, actually it's just a waste of money because these are supposed to give you a really super high gloss shine and, and uh, you got to have really nice painting to achieve that to begin with. So I don't waste any time on uh, finishes like this. I just use these two, uh, which work just as good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, I do use toothbrushes. Uh, they're, they're soft brushes. Actually, this one was a medium, but I go real soft on it. This is my one I use to do my initial scrub, and this would be my conditioner, which is soft. So basically, what I do, let me get This is the only time also that I will use a rag like this on a guitar. And I will only touch the fretboard with it. I won't touch the paint, the pickups, nothing like that. Because this is coarse 
Um, and even though it's it's cloth, it's compared to this, it's like running 50 grit sandpaper on it. So you don't want to wipe your guitar ever with a household cloth. Okay, so let's start with that. The only reason I'm doing this is because it's just on the fretboard and I'm going to use it to absorb the filth that comes out of it. Now like in a rosewood fretboard on a newer guitar you're going to get a lot of brownish red goop out and people's finger oils and the whole purpose of the brush is you get goop built up next to the frets and you're not pushing and scrubbing like you're trying to get dog shit out of the bottom of your shoe. All you're doing is loosening up the crap that's next to the frets with your cleaner and getting that all wiped up. Once that's all off, you'll see we're gonna go to the conditioner. So here we go. But the reason that I do the fretboard first is because just like here, I got some cleaner on the finish. Right? Well you don't want the cleaner on the finish if you just polished it right so that's gonna wipe the the wax off if you just polish the guitar so the most important thing to do is start with the fretboard and just real lightly you know circle motions just clean the the fret area around your edges back and forth loosen up all the garbage And this is the, the real high inlay, so hopefully uh, we don't get a lot of moisture under that. I better dab that. You have to get that looked at. A couple of them are pretty high. So as I learn about this kind of stuff, um, I'll probably start doing more things on my own, like leveling that or taking it out and do it, but. I can only do so much right now. Um, I'm limited in knowledge, and I'm not going to do anything that's above my pay grade because I don't want to screw nothing up. I'd rather pay a professional. See, look at that. Look at that. That's just from the first wipe. Oh, I like these mats too. I, I made this mat and the one over there. Um, I do upholstery for a living in hot rods. So I made some uh, mats that were friendly to finish, look cool, nice and soft, yet they don't move or slide unless you really push on them because they have leather back. Um, so if you guys uh, want one of these, let me know. I can make you one. So this will be my last time down here with the cleaner. Just kind of real lightly go back and forth, loosen up anything else I might got left behind. See, and that was the first wipe. Here we go on the second. Okay. So there we go. That's our first step on the fretboard. like at some point in the past you can see a little bit of uh, super glue lines I don't know if uh, they had fret nibs back in the 70s or not I'd have to look at some other models but it might have been refretted it might not have I think it's original but, uh, 
Yeah, don't look too bad. Alright, so now we're going to go on to the deep conditioner. And what I do with this is I will leave this on while I'm doing my polishing and stuff. And eventually at some point during the polishing I wipe it off because eventually you're not going to want it there because you'll get it all over your hands and on your mat and whatever you're working at and you flip it around. really do I like the uh, like all Dunlop products I, I usually tend to buy a big wad of their strings uh, 1046s um, and I've always liked them I tried uh, elixirs and Ernie balls and they just Ernie balls suck those are like those are garbage strings that's like putting I don't know recycled Coke cans on there. They're like aluminum strings. I don't know. I, I bought some for some of the guitars that I bought lately. And obviously, I cut the strings off when I get them so I can clean them before I picture them and put them up for sale. And I was just so disappointed. But whoever bought those guitars will have to change them nasty earning balls off but at least it came with strings on it and a new set of that but i will never buy any balls again definitely will not do that okay so now we're going to go ahead and move on to polishing and waxing Always make sure that you have, I use all the Dunlop polishing cloths as well, and uh, here's the Platinum 65, and I think this one's a Fender, pretty sure that one's a Fender. Anyways, you always got to make sure you use a really good cloth that's soft enough that's not going to hurt it, and use one for your cleaner, one for your wax, and one for after you're wiping your wax and put it using your wax rag, use a clean one so you can get all your dust off and you can really look at it. So let's go ahead and start wiping this cleaner in. Now I like to go in little circular motions, kind of just work out the, the dirt and any of the checkings or nicks, dings, scratches, just where the bridge and tailpiece shadowed and you couldn't ever clean. Work all that in real good. Make sure next to the fretboard. I'll do this a couple times because you can still just see the smudges all over. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the cleaner again. I noticed there was a pretty good smudge there, so I loaded it up and let it soak while I get the rest of this here. I was admiring this last night and looking at it. 
It's uh, absolutely perfectly imperfect. Just like me, if you, I'm sure, I don't know if you can see it from there, but I'll just talk about it. The binding itself, like on, on the music cards, it's just nice and smooth and even. And this is kind of, <laughs> it's definitely an old guitar, old vintage guitar. Uh, I think back in the day, when they did this by hand, they might have did it differently, but the, you can see the lines aren't just perfectly curved. It, they kind of did that a little bit around the whole guitar. That's fine. I'm not knocking it, I'm just explaining what I'm seeing here. Yeah, we're getting that goober off there, whatever that was. Yeah, the Dunlop, those are the products, they work really good, all the Dunlop stuff does. I mean, I had a... Uh, a satin finish, gothic, Les Paul, and I'm like, well, what do I do with this thing for cleaning purposes? Uh, so I ended up getting this guitar detailer all purpose for like uh, matte finishes. It works okay. Um, not that impressed with it. Okay, so there we go. We got the uh, got the top cleaned twice. Now I'm not gonna wax it yet. This is where I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off this conditioner. Remember, we're gonna get a little bit of lemon oil on it here right before we're done. So we'll just wipe that off like that. Now we're going to go ahead and flip this over on its face. Polish the back side of it and then once I'm done with the whole back, I'll work my side and we'll flip it back over on its back and do the headstock in the front of it. You can do it however you want. I find this system the best way because once you have all the back of it clean and polished and you flip it over and it's on the neck rest it doesn't need to flip over again so you're you're done um, other than when you're completely done with the other side you're gonna have to take another rag and completely wipe it down one more time which we'll see so all right let's go ahead and start cleaning this You can see the three piece neck through the, the finish. I've really been getting into uh, all the quilt tops and uh, the flame tops and stuff like that, bird's eye. But I keep buying solid color guitars, not because I want to just because the deals are good I mean I buy guitars to resell so and I started doing it and I'm still doing it to better my collection so when I first started collecting I was collecting Epiphones um, Les Pauls customs and for the most part standards mostly custom um, once I got to start knowing about the guitars and everything, and I started venturing into the Gibson models, and I sold off all my Epiphones. The only one I have left now is the one on the wall. And that's, I mean, it is a real guitar, uh, but it's just an advertisement sign. Um, yeah, so. Why do I know 
Epiphone. The uh, the mandolin, the Epiphone mandolin made in Japan that just left yesterday or the day before. We sold that on Reverb or Ebit. I think Reverb. Yeah, Reverb. I saw a lot of stuff on Reverb lately. That was uh, one of my last Epiphones. So again, right now, what we're doing is just using the cleaner polish just to get dirt, dust, grease, I don't know, boogers, whatever is on here, skis, you name it. getting there so obviously the part that we're skipping today will be installing the strings because normally when I when I clean a guitar from start to finish I put it back to where you can pick it up and play it again but um, with those inlays sticking up like that I'm not going to put strings back on it until it's fixed so that's what we're going to do with that, we're going to skip that step so you guys will miss the string installation, but uh, real quick about the string installation, when I do string it and I come through and then I pull it back one length from tuner to tuner and you take the string and you go from the outside over the headstock into the middle of the headstock and then you bend your wire up and then you wrap every wrap of that after underneath the one that you went over. And that will lock it in and you only have to have a couple twists around here instead of a big wad of string and you can drop tune and all that without worrying about the string popping out. So that's the way to go with it. Uh, I guess we'll cover that more in depth when we get the fretboard figured out on the, when we do string it. I like to talk to make another video and what happened with the fretboard, what was wrong, what they did. Let's go back here to the polish part now. Now normally, I would polish my butt off, but you're not going to get this to... Uh, you're not going to get these scratches out basically what I'm trying to say. So we're just trying to clean the dirt off of it. It's 45 years old and it is what it is. So right. Yeah this this wax is Really good stuff. You guys are probably thinking, holy oh, shit, look how much you put on there. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be, uh, I got enough here to do the whole thing. Mm. I didn't think it was going to be that much. That's alright, we'll use it. We'll, we'll polish this until there's no lacquer on it, I guess. This is something my wife would do anytime you give her anything goopy, wax, silicone, whatever, she overdoes it. I just did what she would do. Completely overdone it. Overuse it though. The trick too is if you overdo it like this, don't let it dry anywhere. Just keep moving. Keep it moving. Don't stop. Keep repeating to go over it, even if you haven't finished another area or whatever, just don't let it dry. That's the biggest thing to, uh, to the wax part of it. Just don't let it dry. So like 
right here. I'll just kind of go over the whole thing real quick to try to get the majority of the wax off. Again, keeping it from drying, pasting up on you. pretty good. Let's see, now you can tell why I do the back first. Because we wasted a lot of time polishing the front of it. And then the front would be getting smudged from laying on its face. Okay. We move on to the neck. And then I'll hit the sides again when we do the top. So if for some reason I did miss a little bit of wax or something, I'll get it the second time around. And since I used enough wax on the back of that to do two guitars, I still have enough in my rag to do the neck. I look forward to uh, playing this. When I get done with it, I plug it in and play it for you, but to be honest with you, I don't know how to play guitar yet. Um, I started collecting, like I said, the Epiphone. And uh, it all started when we actually bought one for my dad for Father's Day because he used to have the Gibson 2550 anniversary with the belt buckle and all that. And some family members were having a hard time. So being a nice person, he sold it all off. His... Uh, Gibson and the amp and all that. We did it to help somebody, so he don't have it anymore. So we bought him a an Epiphone just so he could have something to play. And that's where it started. Because he's like, well, then you should learn how to play too. So then we started looking at guitars and started buying them, and we never got to the playing part of it. Um, we just travel around hunting and searching online and in guitar shops and there's some really cool boutique guitar shops around here and I'm going to do an episode here pretty soon on all the really cool shops that are around here I mean like everybody knows about Norm's Rare Guitars everybody knows about Chicago Music Exchange um, stuff like that you know Sam Ash and Music Zoo but what about the little mom and pop shops uh that little boutique stores that have handmade items and uh, vintage stuff like this that you're not going to walk into Sam Ash and see on a regular basis. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, those guitar shops that are around here. There's four of them that are within reach of our vicinity here. And then there's a couple down in Tennessee that I'll, I'll talk about that are online that you can go to the very similar to like a Chicago Music Exchange. Lots of vintage, nice stuff. So, I forgot 
back to clean the headstock. I'm going through that process now. Yeah, so anyways, um, I haven't learned how to play yet, but uh, I'm going to. And now that I have this, I have to because uh, my wife isn't going to let me keep something that I don't use. <laughs> I've tried that. Um, I ended up with uh, 50, to 50 guitars in our bedroom, and she said enough's enough. You can't even use this stuff. You don't even know how to play it. Get rid of it. <laughs> so that's when uh, the massive horde of Epiphones started shooting out of eBay and reverb left and right. Until now, they're all gone. And you can't see them there, but I've had a lot of Gibsons come and go. We still have quite a few Gibsons here. I'm on the fence about selling my strap. Because it's nicely used to. I like vintage relic guitars. Not purposely relic, but I like. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I would take a Murphy's Lab all day long. Give me a Murphy's Lab and I'll play the shit out of it. Sound like a two year old in kindergarten class, but I'd do it with a smile. Murphy's Labs are awesome. But yeah, I like like this. I like the real deal. It's been played, it's been used, it's been loved. It's been around. <laughs> you, you can't fake that. Murphy's Lab can come close, but even, even then, just a new guitar relic. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put some string conditioner, or not string conditioner, some uh, lemon oil on the fretboard. Now I'm going to move on to polishing my hardware. I'm going to let this sit while I'm doing my hardware. And then I'll wipe this off good and dry to make sure there's no residue left over before I, uh, well, before I put the strings in it. But since we're not putting the strings in, I'll just wipe it down real good and we'll hang it on the rack until it's time to go down the light. And that's one of the guitar chops that I'll be talking about um, when I do the episode about where to get nice vintage guitars and custom shops and stuff like that. Fender and Gibson and Gretsch's and Rickenbackers and all that. There's there's places around here. Um, and they're, they're kind of like hidden away. Uh, one place that I went to, I drove by it for years. had no idea it was there. So I want to bring it to people's attention. Because there's some really cool stuff out there and I think uh, local shops like that should be supported so uh, they can continue to be there to support their families and their dreams um, instead of just these big corporations. So if, uh, if you ever come across a, a boutique guitar shop that sells stuff like this, then if it's just a hundred bucks or a couple hundred bucks more in the box store, support the little guy. We're the ones that give you jobs. Uh, we're not monopolizing on you. So support the little guys. There you go. I'm wiping this off now. I'm just going to do it now. Because then I'm 
pretty much done with it other than polishing the tuners and reinstalling them and then doing the stream. Because I definitely want, want this to be wiped off this time. I don't want anything left behind You can definitely see the imperfections in it, you know, it's nicely polished. And I don't think it's uh, anything bad. Just it is what it is. See if I can do this without doing too much. Better stop there. I'll tell you a nice thing about uh, finding little places too, private sellers that collect like myself and this guy that I got this guitar off of, the Blues Man Guitars. Um, when you find somebody that's into this kind of stuff that's, that's doing that, you know, You'll find that they'll work with you, too. Or if you, you walk into a, a box store and, like, let's just say Guitar Center, not to pick on them or single them out, but if you take a guitar in there to trade it in, and it's worth, let's just say, 1200 bucks, they'll go, yeah, I'll give you $250 for it. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, really? Um, when I talked to the blues man about trading for this, I mean, he was just like me. He knew I didn't have what I was asking for my guitar, and, and I knew he didn't have what he was asking for this guitar in it. You can't look at it that way. You have to look at the value. So you got to look at the overall, what this guitar would be be worth at the end of the rainbow, the best case scenario, and the worst case scenario. And the same with my guitar. And then you take that and you come up with a way to work out a deal. And that's exactly what we did. So we we had discounted this because we said it should be worth more than that and mine should be worth less because I was asking end of the rainbow and he was asking down at the bottom of the rainbow. So he offered me this and a certain amount of cash that made up for the difference and it was just absolutely fair no screwing around you don't find stuff like that too often usually people always want to get over on you they want they want to get your your guitar for half of what it's worth or you know less than half and then they turn around and try to sell it for triple of what they uh Gave it to you. Now when you trade somebody, if you're just doing a trade, that's the way it should be done. It should be equal, equal in the value. Now, 
since my guitar was worth a little more, that was the right thing to do was to offer the cash with it. And yeah, you can't find that very often in people anymore. They're good about being fair and to their word. I'm quite pleased with the, how this came out. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, these tuners. I'm going to use uh, this rag here as my start. So basically, I'm just going to sit here and polish every single part. So I will do just a couple, show you, and then I'll shut the camera off to spare you this because I'll have to go through six washers, six screws, six inserts, and six tuners. But uh, you can see the, the nasty that was on that. So that's what I'll do is I'll just rub it back and forth a few times, set it down, give it a final wipe off, put it all back on. Just to get all the the crud and yuck off of them. I'm not trying to uh, make them look brand new again. I just want the dirt off. That's all. So guys, that's the uh, the way I clean guitars. Um, you might not call it the proper way, but that's how I see the proper way. Get as much as you can out of the way. <coughs> clean it, polish it, put it back together when you do. All right. I also polish all these pieces too, so I'll spare you that as well. But once you get all this stuff cleaned and put back on, and you don't have any dirt and goobers anywhere, um, you can get it at that point when you've got all apart like this and you put it back together, you can set it up and get your intonation exactly the way you want it, and your string height, all that, and you're set up, and you're good to go. And it is what it is, but so there you go. That's uh, how I clean all my guitars. So every time I get one, doesn't matter what it is. First thing I do is cut the strings off, pull as many parts as I can off of it, clean them, put it all back together, and then I go through detailed pictures of it. And depending on which site, Reverb's 25, 24 pictures or 25. Either way, uh, I think it's 25 on Reverb, and eBay is only 12 on, a, on guitar listings, which is stupid. <coughs> How are you supposed to show everything in 12 pictures? I mean, because I can burn up just general photos in 12, you know, just the head stock, the front, the back. And then when you want to start getting detailed pictures for people, you can't because you run out of photos. You only get 12. So you have to, you have to take a ton of photos. Um, in hopes that people will ask for more photos uh, and I put that in my listings please ask for more photos because there's nothing worse than having somebody displeased about something they could have avoided just by asking for more pictures more questions or reading a lot of people will buy things without reading oh that drives me nuts why do you, why do you read the description you know, um, never had any issues to where I had to refund anybody or anything like that or return anything, but, uh, people can be difficult, picky. So anyhow, again, this one is not for sale unless you're going to give me the money to buy that, uh, super, super clean triple pickup one on reverb right now for eight grand. Uh, I'm just going to keep this one. So again, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, next video we do, uh, I don't even know if I need to do one on putting strings on this because um, I'm sure you guys know how to put strings on. We might, uh, we might recap something on it. You never know. I'm going to pull the pickups out of it yet too. So we'll probably do another little finish up video on it. We'll See what kind of pickups, or what the pickups look like 
stuff in it, the pickup cavities, um, put the strings and everything back on the tuners, and then it'll be good to go. We'll give it a try out on, uh, we got a Blues DeVille 212, that's uh, not a reissue, we'll throw it on there and see how it sounds. We've got a hot rod, uh, it's got a blue uh, bass breaker, we'll try out some, some different amps. Got ultimate choruses. It's just uh, what's that one over there? That's a Princeton chorus. My dad's got the ultimate chorus. He's got two twelve R. He's got a whole bunch of amps. I can't even remember all of them. But uh, yeah, we're gonna do uh, some videos on on amps here shortly. There's at least eight or nine of them. <laughs> we gotta go over uh, some acoustic amps, the blues amps, the rock amps, the pedal amps. <clears throat> Between my dad and I, we've got a ton of amps, so uh, look forward for uh, some amplifier videos. The amplifier you guys see in the background, that uh, Princeton Chorus, my dad has one uh, from the 80s, a red knob that is in pristine condition. Uh, that one I bought because it's a piece of shit, and that's exactly why I bought it. Uh, one speaker don't work, the power's on, but you don't get any sound out of it. The Polex is shit, the real cloth is shit, it's just, it's a piece of shit. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna just tear that thing apart and uh, we're gonna re-Polex it and real cloth and we're gonna do some crazy weird shit. Uh, <clears throat> so look forward to some other videos. Keep an eye on the channel and whatnot. Tell your friends about it. Uh, eventually I will get better at this and you guys will enjoy watching this uh till then thanks for watching in this last boring hour of your life uh hope you learned something hope you liked the video take care